Number five. It's a movie we didn't review on this show either. It came out too early in the year. It but... was actually, I think, the first movie I saw this year in theater. It's David Fincher's Zodiac. It's a masterpiece. I went in expecting seven, and I got something <laughs> completely different. It's really thoughtful and slow, and it builds and builds and builds. And it's totally a movie of the 70s, like All the President's Men. And it was... It's re- Really what, well I mean, what I thought was really fascinating about it is that the plot is so like complicated, but yeah. you're really, su- I mean, you're really sucked into all the little details of the Zodiac case. And it, that's really, it pulls you totally in. Totally, what it's about. It's about these guys that become obsessed with a case, and there's no solution to the case. I mean, don't go into this movie expecting like an end reveal where it's, this guy did it and they arrest him. That didn't happen in real life. Right. No, it's, it's about obsession. Right. It, no, it's about the it's about the search for this killer and what it does to the people who search for him. And it, yeah. as I mean. David Fincher's dealt with... I, what, that's what he does. He takes these sort of genre movies and he totally turns them on his head. He did it with Seven. He's doing it with Zodiac. It's, it was really an excellent movie. It's really great. So, number four, uh, we just saw uh, There Will Be Blood. And, again, we just did a review on this and I don't... I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say again, crazy movie, awesome movie, haunting movie. Um... I, I almost can't really talk about it because I feel like I can't do the movie justice. Yeah, it's that and No Country for All Men are the two movies I think are become going to become these classics of this year. Yeah, I think those are the two. It's it's still and sticking with me. They're they're both slow, fuck of your head kind of revisionist sort of neo western stuff. There's a lot of, there's a lot in common with these movies. Yeah, the actually. difference between them though I think is No Country you kind of know what you're getting going in. This you don't know what you're going to get at the end. It just surprised you a little bit more. Yes, the, the end of No Country is kind of surprising too. I won't ruin either. Yeah. But, yeah. So, number three. Assassination of Jesse James by the Coward of Robert, Coward Robert Ford. Both the longest movie title of the year and one of the best pictures of the year. I think probably the longest movie we saw also. Well, maybe Grand House. That might... Yeah. Well, that's two movies. Yeah. The longest single movie we saw. Yes, and it was... I wasn't expecting it to be entertaining or... I'm not sure what I was expecting. The <laughs> reviews were really mixed, but it really is just a masterpiece. It's slow and thoughtful it's more of like a poem in a way it's I ca- yeah. a combination of visual oh, no, it's a very acting lyrical movie. And it all works really together in a perfect yeah. way it's, I mean it's anchored by Casey Affleck as Robert Ford who I still and think is going to be nominated for an Oscar I think it's totally possible even though the movie's not getting a lot of love but yeah, yeah just like so many great westerns about the, it's about the relationship between two very complex men him and uh, Brad Pitt as Jesse James and the the way one I first idolizes the other and then realizes like it's not the person he thought he was. And I love the way that it doesn't end with Jesse James being killed. It goes on to say like what happens to this guy that killed him afterwards? How does that mm-hmm. affect him? It turns out he's almost like becoming the person he was idolizing. Yeah. In some ways. Well but it's I mean it's really interesting. Yeah, definitely check it out. It's slow moving, but if you give it the attention it deserves, it's worth your while. An amazing score. Oh yeah. Though not this was the year of amazing scores, among other things. My favorite score is still There Will Be Blood, but uh, almost matched by uh, Nick Cape's work on Assassination of Jesse James. Really beautiful stuff. Yeah. Our number, number two, two movie. It's <laughs> my personal favorite movie of the year. Josh doesn't quite understand it, but a lot of people loved it. I don't it's, understand the, the praise around this movie. I mean, there's movies from Tim Burton and the Coen Brothers and David Fincher and all these great directors, and my favorite movie is an 80-minute musical from it's, Ireland. Uh, it's not a musical. It's a music film. It's, it's a film with music in it. It's once. It's the best movie I've seen all year. It's so touching and just... I love this movie. I can't even explain why. It's the music and... The story. It's not a Hollywood film, and Josh looks really dumb. This, mo- this movie has put some sort of spell over Ken that he can't it's explain. It's put a spell over a lot of people <laughs> that have seen it. Josh just doesn't have a heart, and that's kind of the problem with this. No, see, what the truth about this movie is, it's, I mean, it is well done in the, in the way it presents the central relationship. It's very realistic, and I appreciate that in a movie, but it's just, there's nothing going on in this movie. They could have cut it to 20 minutes, and I feel no, like nothing would have been lost. All. It's all about like the way they interact with these songs. This scene where they play Falling Slowly on the piano is so perfect because it's this guy realizing, oh my god, I think I'm in love with this girl. And it's just from there, it just yeah, but the, goes. But also, they're, so just, they're just playing a song. And they play, the other, this, no. they play some of the songs over and over again. They're, they play two songs twice. This, this song could have used a serious... This movie could have used a serious editor, I think. No, it's 80 minutes long. It's perfect length. And the, and the I mean, ending is just right. In the end, these characters only spend a little bit of time with each other, and then they... Well, I, I guess I'm not going to spoil how it ends, yeah, but... It's a perfect ending for that story. 
But I, I mean, they've I've, changed each other. It's like he had no direction in life, and then she comes in and she kind of makes him wake up and go, "Wait a minute, what am I doing?" So it's not just about him going, "Oh, I'm in love with this girl." It's about him realizing he needs to do something with his life, and that's what this week in his life is. Right, but to wake up. Uh, I just. I didn't, I mean, I recognized some of the good points about this movie, but I just, I didn't care about the characters particularly, and the songs were not good at all, and the songs are more than half of the movie, so if you're not a fan of the music, then it's really going to grate on you after a while. If this movie doesn't get the best song Oscar, then the Oscars are a joke this year. Yeah. Well, I have, we'll see. Anyway, uh, yeah, so once it's going to be... It's on DVD, go watch it right now, it's amazing. See what you think. Uh, if, and if and you're Josh, you didn't hate it. You just, it's I not quite your top ten. No, oh, no, it's not quite in my top i just saying, if you were disappointed by this movie after all the praise and hype it's getting, uh, you're not crazy. You're just kind of dumb. On to our number one movie of the year. My personal number one. This was by in your top five. Five, I think. Yeah, more. but still. Uh, this movie, uh, after all, you know, the weird head movies and, you know, very long epic... Well, this was an epic, too, but... Just this, I mean, it's weird that my top movie of the year would be a romance. It's and, Juno. Uh, <laughs> it is Atonement. Was my fit was our number one movie of the year. Atonement. I just a fan. I mean, I just it's a, it's an emotionally overwhelming movie at parts. Just it's yeah. I've never seen tragic love treated you know so like intelligently. It's just what Titanic didn't do it for you. This <laughs> oh my god. I, 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 it seems like a chick flick, but it's totally not. It goes places that you would never expect it to go. I totally thought this was going to be Pride and Prejudice Part 2 when I went in. It's not, at all, it's it's not, not at all. the sort of period piece you're looking for. It's just, and it's just, it focuses on both the lead romance from Keira Knightley and James McAvoy, mm -hmm. and... The story I thought was more interesting was... Right, uh, had the frank kind of how it was looked on by uh, Keira Knightley's sister, Brioni Tallis, who's uh, kind of framing it all in her own mind, and... It's about the way we like frame stories and the way stories are important to us. Yeah, and the way maybe you try to atone for your sins through art. Right. It's At, kind of beautiful. It just it works on a lot of levels, and there are, are so many beautiful movie, moments in this, both f through the acting and from the cinematography and the music. Yeah, there's and, one shot. I'm assuming they probably had to cut it or something, but it's just mm -hmm. this long, long take of just a war field. Yeah. And I mean, just, just like the colors and everything, it's just so so moving at parts. And Another movie with a great score. Yeah, which I mean, scores do a lot for me. It yeah. does a lot. It's yeah. I just I I mean, there are movies. There are lots of intelligent movies this year, but this was an intelligent movie that he also could like, fall in love with, and so that's what makes it my number one of the year. Yeah, there's a lot of good movies this year. I think. Two thousand seven was an excellent year for movies. A lot of movies that didn't make this list that. Should, could have, I think. We're going to throw our top tens up at the end so you yeah. can see some of our favorite movies that didn't make our combined ten. But, uh, yeah. We'll, uh, see you probably next year with some more reviews. We'll keep reviewing movies for at least a little while longer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for watching this whole year. It's been real fun giving you guys movie reviews. And we'll leave you with a look at the year in film. Words fall through me and always fool me and I can't react And games that never amount to more than they're meant